have been where we are today. He's our king, he's our lover, he's our all in know. The Bible said in him we live, in him we live, in him we have our being. We give all glory to the Lord Almighty for his faithfulness. Glory, hallelujah to his name for how far he has helped us. It can only be God. So we appreciate him for his faithfulness. We thank God. He's been so good and he's been so awesome in our lives. Um, if we think of the things that is happening in the whole world now, and God still allowing us to be who we are today in him, uh, he is worthy of our praise. So we give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 We want to just, uh, let's stand up and just bless, bless the name of the Lord. Let's give some. Let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate him. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are wonderful. My Lord, you are excellent. If you know you sing it, Lord. Thank God for your life. 
mind. And all I can say is, it's getting better. Amen. Hallelujah. Whether the devil likes it or not, we are not going to remain the same. Amen. 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 Turn with me to the book of Jeremiah. Book of Jeremiah. As we all know that the topic of today is encountering the potter's hand. And book of Jeremiah says, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrote a war on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was mad in, his, in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. May God bless his uh, word in our lives and let it profit us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Who is a potter? From, the, from what we have just read now, there's one significant somebody that we are seeing that we are all expecting his hand. And we said, the potter's hand. But who is that potter? Who is a potter? In a layman's or in, in dictionary or in English, a potter is just someone that has this gift of crafts and arts that can use clay, that can make use of clay to make some nice and beautiful designs. We'll feed you with clay and get clay together and just mold it into different vessels or shapes that pots or, or um, images, ornaments for beauty. But when we go into the book of Genesis chapter 127, Bible made us understand that God created man in his own image. In the image of God, God created him. Male and female created he them. When we move into the book of Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 to 19, Bible said there that, and the Lord said, the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he could call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. When we get to uh, Genesis chapter 3 verse 19, it said, in, this, in the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken. For dost thou art, and unto dost thou shalt return. When we look at all these scriptures, all these scriptures actually confirm that we are dust. We are actually the clay. The clay that God himself gets together. Don't forget I said a potter is someone that feeds you with clay and mold it into something. But when we're looking at all these verses of the scripture we have read now, we've seen God there telling us that he's the one that has got us from the ground and mold us. But the beauty of it is when he was molding us, he didn't mold us to be birds. He didn't mold us to be cow. He didn't mold us to be uh, to be lion. He didn't mold us to be snake. But God decided to mold us human beings, and not just human beings. He molded us in His own image. Scripture confirms it that we are molded from the dust. So God, our Potter. Being our potter, he did not just mold us, he mold us in an agreement with Jesus, which is the word, the Holy Spirit, which was the breath 
that was breath on us. Because when you look at the book of Genesis, those scriptures that we have read, expressly we understood that we were being molded in the image of God. And when he was to create us, he said, Come, let us. Let us. What was spoken, which we know that in the book of John, chapter 1, the Bible said, in chapter 1 from verse 1, made us to understand that Jesus was the word. So Jesus was in attendance. And after that, the Bible said, the breath, the Holy Spirit, who round. I'm taking us back to creation of the world, or of the earth now. The Holy Spirit was in attendance as well. So we see when we were to be created, we were not only created by God, it was in the conjunction with Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So actually, God is the one that was doing the architectural work, but the word that has been spoken out, the word that has been spoken out, was the one that actually been the creation or the creator. Because if the word has not gone forth, the word brings the command and then action follow. And after we are being created, we will, breath was given unto us to make us a living being. Amen. Amen. So when we look at that book of Genesis, we see that all through the book of Genesis chapter 1, the Bible made us to understand that everything that God created was good. Was good. But that same book, that, that same book of Genesis in chapter 3, we read about the old serpent. The old serpent. Devil. That actually came and messed up the good things that God has created. So book of Jeremiah chapter 18 that we read, verse 4, said, And the vessel that he made of clay was made in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel and seemed good to the potter to make it. You see, amazingly, God is not, it's not that God is unaware of everything that happens to us. We all know that God is an all-knowing God. Amen? Amen? God is an all-knowing God. So whatever is happening to man, God knows about it. For us to know that God knew quite okay, something will surely happen. When Adam and Eve messed up in the garden, the Bible says they take uh, leaves to cover their nakedness. But God himself knew quite okay that that leaf will soon dry up. Shame and disgrace will soon come. And so, he went ahead of them. If he had already prepared a lamb, if you remember, animals were created before human beings. So he had already done the job, knowing fully where sometimes something will go wrong. So if we walk into a situation that is not pleasant, if all of a sudden something turned around and decided to call us the name Christ has not called us, the one that created us knew about it. Whether we caused it by ourselves, whether it is, it is something, forget about that one for now. But I want you to know that the one that created you, that says wonderfully and fearfully he has made us, is aware of it. Is aware of it. He's an all-knowing God, and he has already made provision. He has already made provision. That's why the Bible said there's no temptation that is more than it say, that, that is more than us that has not been to someone else. And that's why you always make a way out. Christ always make avenue out for us from every situation that devil thought he has put us. Amen. Amen. And when you read in that same book of Genesis, that's Genesis chapter 3, it's still amazing. You're giving a curse. You're punishing someone for what he has done. At the same time, you're making a way out. He is God that will test you and will be giving you answer at the same time. He will be asking you questions and at the same time he will be, he will be giving you answer. 
may we be smart enough may we be smart enough to quickly identify when God is giving us answers to the question that he himself is asking us amen, amen. so I said God is an all knowing God and not all knowing is all seeing God He's all seeing God. Amen. Amen. He sees everything. He sees everything. Because how would he have known that Adam and Eve have messed up? And he came to them. And usually he said, Adam, Adam, yeah, where are you? You want to tell me God didn't know where they are? Oh, we, we were hiding. We, we were hiding because he said, why are you hiding? Have you eaten the fruit? You know, he always give us the opportunity to come out and tell us, uh, tell him, ask him. And, and today is another opportunity to tell him our story. Areas that we felt he needs to come in. Amen. Amen. So it's an all-knowing. So if it's an all-knowing God, an all-seeing God, why does he allow his work to be tampered with? If he sees everything, if he knows everything and he can do everything, why did God allow his work to be tampered with? Because if you, if you, if you observe that verse properly, he said, while the potter is still working, and I, want, and I believe every one of us know that we are still in the making, we are going to be perfected when Christ comes and take every one of us home.